Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, welcome. Welcome to our family, welcome to our community. This channel is for parents, parents seeking change, change in their mindset, the way they handle stress, the way they cope with hard times, and so much more. So if any of those topics sound interesting to you or you relate in some way, I urge you to check out some of my other videos. I have a couple of my favorites that I'm going to be linking below, but feel free to browse the channel. And if you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and do so. I post on here every single Friday. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the video. As you can see by the title, today we're going to be talking about mental toughness. And why is it that some parents seemingly thrive in these stressful environments, yet some seem to fail? And in a way, this so relates to parenting because parenting is essentially a highly stressful work environment. This is oftentimes, it's a full-time job when you're dealing with kids. And when I talk about this idea that we seemingly fail, I mean that so much of us suffer in our imagination more so than we do in reality. And this even happens to me all the time. And it used to happen a lot more often than it does now. And I'm going to show you why. But I want to talk about this concept. Why do we suffer more often in imagination? Well, it's because for us, it's really easy to consider all the possible reasons that we can fail when we're thinking about making a change in our life or trying to drop an old habit or pick up a new habit maybe. So many of us get stuck that we choose to remain stagnant and just remain in the status quo. And this is something I talked about in last week's video. So I'm gonna leave that link for you guys if you wanna check that out. What really stops us from making that next step or setting that new goal or reaching that new goal rather is the fact that we are already thinking of the ways that we can fail. And because we fear that failure so much, we choose not to go after it. We choose to not achieve that goal and just stay comfortable. And a quote I just came across recently that's perfect for this video is that hard choices make an easy life. Easy choices make a hard life. We see so many successful people nowadays and younger ones at that and parents and you know all of these really wealthy people and it's you know the secret is that they're making hard choices they're getting uncomfortable how many of you feel like you've lost some part of your identity you feel like Maybe you stopped achieving the things in life that you wanted to achieve because there are certain choices now that you have to make that you didn't have to think about before you had kids. How many of you choose to focus on their life more than your own? Probably most of you. And you get so caught up with what their future is going to look like, what their success is going to look like, that you lose sight of your own. And with that, you lose pieces of you along the way. You get caught up in the emotional side of things. You feel irritable. You feel that something's missing. Maybe it makes you anxious or stressed or lonely even. And all of these things building up over time are affecting your relationships with them, your behaviors in general. Maybe your relationship with your spouse, but most importantly, the relationship with yourself. So many of us make goals. We make yearly goals, we make monthly goals, weekly goals, and even daily goals. But how many of you really achieve those goals? There are a lot of goals that I have set that I've never achieved. There are also a lot of goals that I've set that I have achieved. And the ones that I have achieved, I've really thought about a few things, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Behind me is a process that Tim Ferriss came up with. And if you don't know Tim Ferriss, he is the author of The 4-Hour Workweek. He's a very successful author, podcaster, entrepreneur. And the way that he describes this is that, you know, he came across this idea of stoicism and really dug into the idea of what these ancient stoics were thinking about and how they related this to 
mental toughness. The idea of people becoming successful because they were mentally tough. You know, just to give you a little bit of background on Tim, he was in a really dark place a long time ago. You know, you wouldn't think that because he's so successful now, but his, he had a family history of depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder. He even attempted suicide at one point in his life. And until he came across this idea and really read up on it and got all the information he needed, until he came across this idea, and for our purposes in today's video, I want to focus in on the fact that this idea of mental toughness really relates to focusing on the things that we can control and not focusing on the things that we can't control. Because more often than not, we are focused on the things that we can't control, aka all those possible outcomes or the failures that could happen, which stops us from making changes and moving forward. They stop us from becoming mentally tough, which is what we really need to thrive in these stressful environments that I'm sure all of you are probably in right now. But in order to train yourself to focus on what you can control and not focus on what you can't, we need to use a few tools. And we need to really investigate what those fears are. So Tim Ferriss came up with this idea called fear setting, like goal setting, but instead fears. But we are not just focusing on all of the negative stuff and all the bad things. In order to fear set, we need to have a particular goal in mind. So it's like you're doing the two, but you're focusing on all the obstacles that can, could come in your way. And so he separates this tool that he calls it into three pages or three categories you can consider it. So the first page would look something like this up here, and I apologize if you can't see it all the way, but I tried my best here. So the top of the page would say, what if I blank, and you would insert the goal that you have in mind. So say your goal is to lose a certain amount of weight. We'll just talk about weight. And you would list all the possible fears that you have. So say one of the fears you might come up with is, you know, I, I won't be able to make it to the gym enough times a week because of my busy schedule. Or I don't have enough money to invest in getting a gym membership. Well, okay. In the second column, you would write all the things that you can do to prevent that from happening. So. If you have to, let, let's go with the first one. So say you didn't have enough time. Well, you could rearrange your schedule, find someone to support you or help you in this process if you need help taking care of your kids or just moving things around in your schedule to make it work. Set out a specific time that you can dedicate to making this happen. For the second one, what if you didn't have the money to invest in going to a gym? Well, that's pretty simple. You can just choose to do things that are at home, things that are available on the internet. There are tons of resources and videos and guides and everything under the sun to help you get started without having that gym membership. So in the third column, you would repair. So you maybe have to talk to, to someone in order to get that help to move around your schedule. Or maybe you have to do a little extra research to find out what are the available resources that you have. So it's all about setting yourself up for success, listing all of the possible things that you could run into that would affect this process from happening. And the reason why this process is so powerful is that once you see everything so clearly laid out on paper, it takes away the power of that fear. And this idea of writing in general is something that I'm always talking about on this channel. When you can get all of the thoughts that are up here physically on paper and you can physically see them, it takes away their power. It's also a good thing to use if you have a sort of monkey mind where you have incessant thoughts and they're constantly running and you can't seem to just stop thinking about it. So this helps you dive deep and investigate what's really up there when you can't really seem to find it. So the second part of this process is listing the benefits that you could potentially have on the success or a partial success. So if we went with that idea of losing weight, what are the benefits that we could have from losing that weight? 
how much more confident can we become? Is it going to affect our relationship with our kids? Maybe we have more energy. Maybe even with our relationship with our spouse, it, are things gonna improve in that way? Are you gonna be able to look at yourself different and feel more confident? And you know, all of these things that could t potentially happen. It's a really motivating factor when you can look at all of the things that could be potentially really great if you achieve this goal. So the third part of this process is the cost of inaction. So what you're gonna put here are three separate columns and it's gonna be six months, one year, three years, or five years, whatever time increments you want, it doesn't really matter. But essentially what you're gonna look at is what could happen if you didn't change anything or if you didn't follow through with that goal and if you let your fears come in the way of achieving that goal. What would happen to you at six months? What would your life look like? What would it look like at one year, at three years, at five years? Because more often than not, we're so good at considering, like I mentioned, all of these things that could go wrong if we change something new. But we don't think about enough what could happen if we remained where we were and didn't make any changes. What would our life look like a year from now if we remained this way? If we continued these unhealthy habits and we continued with this fixed mindset or letting our stress affect us emotionally, physically. And again, this doesn't have to be a physical fear that you have. It can be an emotional one. Maybe you want to change your emotional behaviors, your emotional intelligence. Maybe you want to change spiritually or change mentally if it's affecting your mental health. There are a lot of factors that you could play around with here, just depending on your situation. There are so many options. And I think it's important that we really look at where in your life is it more important to focus on your fears rather than your goals. Sometimes we really need to focus on the things that are going to stop us. Because these are the things that we tell ourselves each day that we don't listen to but that lives subconsciously in our mind. These are the things that affect our decisions. They affect our thoughts and emotions and behaviors. No matter what area you want to change, there's always a way to get there. Before I end today's video, I just wanted to announce that spots for my one-to-one -one are opening up. So if you'd like to schedule a free consult or are looking to know more information on that, I'm gonna leave my website and the link to the consult below. But essentially, if you are a parent looking to change, looking to feel more confident, to let go of your anger or your frustration or find new ways to cope with trauma or grief or loss, anything of that nature, if you're looking to change, then I urge you to sign up for the free consult. Just to recap, what we talked about in today's video is the idea of mental toughness and why some people really thrive in stressful environments and why some others fail. We talked about the three strategies of Tim Ferriss's fear setting tool. And we talked about how to use that in order to set our fears and achieve our goals. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always, I hope you guys learned something from it and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.